Hey there, James here, and welcome to another one of my videos. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're gonna look at three essential licks which are just perfect for beginner or intermediate blues guitars. Once you've taken these licks and experimented with them and worked out some variations on them of your own, you'll start to find your playing will sound much more authentic, much more bluesy, and probably much more like the players that you want it to sound like. So without further ado, let's dive into today's lesson. Now we're gonna be playing these licks in the key of A over a 12 bar blues in A using the A blues scale. Now you probably know this already, but just in case, here it is. We're gonna be playing it starting at the fifth fret on the E string. We're gonna go five to eight, five, six, seven on the A string, five to seven on the D string, five, seven, eight on the G, five to eight on the B, and five to eight on the top E. You'll see the tab on the screen now. If you need to, pause it and just take a minute to learn the scale. One common mistake that I've seen players make is they think that when you're playing over 12 bar blues and the chords change, you have to change your scale. Well, let me tell you now, in case you don't know, you don't. You can play over the top of the entire 12 bar blues with one scale. So here we're soloing over 12 bar blues in A. We can use the notes in that A blues scale over the entire chord progression. Just wanna make that clear because it's something that holds a lot of players up. Now, learning the scale is just a start. We need to learn the best notes to bend and the nice little scale passages and all the things that are really gonna bring it to life. So as we go through these licks now, um, take a note of any favorite little bits that you really like the sound of so that you can come back to them later and experiment with them. Okay, let's have a listen to lick one. <laughs> break that lick down. So I'm starting with my first finger on the B string at the fifth fret. Then I'm going to the top E at the fifth fret. And then eight to five on the B. Now you notice I'm using my third finger instead of my little finger. I think it's a good idea to develop that stretch. It can really help your blues playing because it puts your third position, uh, your third finger rather, in this position here. And we're gonna bend that note a lot. In fact, we're gonna do that in a moment. So after we've played that eighth fret on the B, go down to five on the B string with your first finger. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this eighth fret on the B string and we're gonna bend it. Now it's gonna take some push this, you want your thumb over the top, an important bending tip there. You also wanna be backing up with these fingers here. Now bending is one of the most important blues techniques to get down. If you find you're bending like this or like this, then you've got a bit of a problem. So try and copy how I'm doing it because you'll find you, it'll really help you get your bend sounding great. That makes a huge difference to your blues playing. Anyway, back to the lip. We've got this eighth fret on the B string. We're gonna bend it up two frets. Then cut it off before you let it down. So, so far in lip one, we've got this. Let's move on to the next bit. Now we're gonna go five to eight on the B string. I'll probably use my first and third here again. Then my first finger is coming down to the G string at the fifth fret. I'm gonna play that. And then I'm gonna play the seventh fret on the D string. Now you'll notice here, doing a little bend then, and that's called a blues curl. It's a small, sort of less than a half fret bend. Just gives the note a nice bluesy flavor. Now you wanna add it on at the end of the note, like this. Just before you go to the next one. If you add it on too soon, it just sounds out of tune. So that's lit one. There's some cool little nuggets in there which you can take and use in your playing. So here it is, one more time, and then I'll play it for you over the backing track. One, two, three. And one more time, one, two, three. 
So that's how you play lick one. Remember those bending tips and check out that bend on the B string in that lick because it's the most common blues bend you ever see. You've probably seen that a lot in licks you've learned so far. Okay, let's have a listen to lick two now. It sounds like this. Three, four. We're beginning by bending the seventh fret on the G string up two frets. We're going to mute that with our right hand, so let's gently touch it and let it back down. You see in the video that I'm doing that, just gently touching it with the side of my hand. When I let the bend down, it's nice and clean and finished. It's not like this. It's clipped and nice and tidy. So that's an uh, important little muting technique for you there. So we're going to do that bend twice like this. Notice again, I got my thumb over and I'm backing up with these fingers to give me a nice strong bend. Okay, next part of the lick, we're gonna do the bend one more time. Kill it off, let it down, and then go seven to five on the G. So first part of the lick. Now the second part of it just goes down the blue scale pan. It's doing this. Going eight to five on the B string, eight seven five on the G. I'm using three two one here because I'm already in that kind of position. If you really want to, you could use your little finger here. I'll do it my way, but you can do that the other way if you prefer. Eight seven five on the G. Then go seven on the D string, five on the G, and seven on the D. So a nice little blue scale passage there just to slip into your soloing. So here's the whole look again before we hear it over the track. Three, four. Okay, one lick to go, and this one's using a cool little double stop on the top two strings. A double stop is when we play two strings together. It's kind of like a mini chord. So the lick sounds like this. Three, four. <laughs> So we're beginning with the double stop and we're just pressing down the B string and the top E string at the fifth fret. Now I'm using my first finger like that. You just want to kind of flatten it down on both of them, just as if you're playing a small sort of bar chord. And what we're going to do is pick that three times. I would probably pick that down, up, down each time I play it. So I'd go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Because we do it three times in total. One, two, three. And then just give it a down pick at the end. Now, once you've got the hang of that, you can practice adding the slide in. And what we're going to do here, we're going to start it just like one fret away. So down at the fourth fret. We're going to pick it there and quickly slide it up to the fifth fret. So I'm picking it in four, sliding up to five, and then picking it twice more. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, like that. And that's the double stop part of this lick. It's the sort of thing that the early rock and roll guitar players like Chuck Berry, guys like that used to play. But you'll hear it in a lot of blues players. Okay, so we've got this so far. Let's finish off this lick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play five on the top E string, eight down to five on the B string, 
then we're going to bend the seventh fret up on the G string. I'm bending up two frets. Then I'm going five to eight on the B string. So using a few little bits that we've seen in some of the previous licks here. Then to wrap it up, let's go five on the G with your first finger, a little bit of a blues curl there. And then seven on the D string with your third finger. Again, thumb over the top, backing up on a bend. Can't miss emphasize that enough, really important. If your bend sound weak, it really screws up your playing. So check you're doing that right. Okay, here's the whole lick. Uh, just with just me playing it before we hear it over the backing track. Three, four. So there's three new licks to use in your playing. Now it's really important that you experiment with these. And you'll find under this video a link to the exact same backing track that I'm using in this lesson. So what you can do when you feel like you know these licks, uh, skip over to that video and see if you can make them work over the backing track. Now try and play them exactly as I did, that's, that's cool. But also see what happens when you just kind of dismantle them. Just experiment around with the bits I was doing. See what you can come up, because that's actually more important then learning exactly what I play. It's the bends and the double stops and these bits that you want to extract from the licks and practice using the playing. That's how you're going to become a fluent sort of speaker of the blues language and a great improviser on guitar. So really important to do that. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy my teaching, like my lessons and visit my website as well and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be straight back in touch. Other than that, look out for part two of this Beginner's Blues Lick series coming in just a couple of days. So thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.